Today in the news we got Intel getting crushed, some console news and a ghost canyon. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So Intel made a bold move earlier this month when they revealed that they would cut the prices of their 10th gen Cascade Lake X processors. The cut was deep with their 18 core flagship for high-end desktops being slashed from $2,000 for the 9th gen all the way down to $1,000 for their upcoming 10th. While the cuts were a good move, performance was still to be determined to see if there was any reason to choose a let's say 10980XE over the upcoming 3950X. Well, over the weekend, Leaker Extraordinaire Tom Apisak found a 3D Mark Firestrike test for both the 16 core AMD and 18 core Intel CPU. On the AMD benchmark, the 3950X was paired with a 2080 Ti, 32GB of RAM and dual channel, and it scored a total of 29,663 points. On the Intel side, the 10980XE was paired with the less powerful 2070, 64GB of RAM and quad channel, and scored a total of 20,703. Now, since the GPUs are a part of the equation for the total score for Firestrike, we're going to have to focus on the CPU bound physics score, which is, well, not good for Intel. The 10980XE scored 25,838 points, while the 3950X scored 32,082. That means the 3950X is about 24% faster than Intel's top HEDT CPU, despite having two fewer cores. That's insane, considering the 3950X is still considered a mainstream processor, while Intel's Cascade Lake X clearly lives in the HEDT space. Now, not only that, but the 3950X will be about $250 less expensive. Now the memory speeds were different in both benchmarks, but they would not account for a 24% difference. According to Tech Power Up, the difference is mainly due to all core frequencies. The 10980XE when pushed has an all core of 3.8 GHz, while the 3950X is expected to have one that is right over 4 GHz. This coupled with AMD's significantly better IPC means in Intel never really had a chance. With the 3950X and Threadripper coming next month, Intel's HEDT platform is, well, truly dead. Speaking of Intel, last week we saw our first hint at their i3s for the 10th gen Comet Lake CPUs. Instead of 4 cores and 4 threads, Intel enables hyperthreading for 4 cores and 8 threads on all i3s. Well, it looks like this enable hyperthreading on all of the things will also happen on their i5 line. We haven't seen a 6 core 12 thread CPU since the 8th gen 8700K. On the 9th gen, 6 core CPUs were limited to 6 threads. Well, now a Sys software benchmark shows a 6 core 12 thread CPU, which is likely Intel's way to counter AMD's R5 6 core CPUs. We can tell it's a new generation since it has 12 megabytes of cache. This would put a little more order on their mainstream lineup with i3s at 4 cores 8 threads, i5s at 6 cores 12 threads, i7s at 8 cores and 16 threads, and i9s at 10 cores and 20 threads. The only thing Intel has to fix now is their pricing, as usual. In console news, we got a little bit of Xbox and a little bit of PlayStation. On the green side, it looks like Project Scarlet CPUs will be quite powerful. During an official Xbox Magazine interview, Microsoft exec uh, Aaron Greenberg said that there will be less compromise on the frame rate front. With the older Xbox One X, dynamic resolution in 4K settings was the only solution. But even there, 60 FPS is something that was quite hard to reach. Now, Microsoft says that with the next gen, they can do 4K, but we can also do 120 FPS. Now, the wording still makes me wonder if both will happen at the same time, like 4K 120, or if it's one or the other. But with all the visual trickery console games use to increase FPS, I'm pretty sure they were talking about both. The only issue I have with the CPU statement is that at higher resolution, the CPU doesn't really do much work. So they were probably talking about the chip in general, AKA the whole APU. As for Sony, well, do you remember that pattern of the PS5 that we saw a few weeks ago? Yeah, that was real. A photo of the actual console was leaked by Zone of Tech featuring the V-shape intake. Now, the photo is of a prototype for the dev kits, thank God, but it shows that PlayStation has a much bigger focus on cooling. 
Circling back to Intel, remember that PCIe computer we talked about a few weeks ago? Well, that thing will actually be the heart of the Ghost Canyon NUX. Uh, a thread over on coolshare.cn shows the NUC being completely disassembled. So the whole computer connects to a small PCB via PCIe. A small 500 watt power supply lives at the bottom of the case. And you even have an extra PCIe slot to put whatever GPU you want in there. And you have a 500 watt power supply and the CPU is the 9980HK at 45 watts, which means you have a whole lot of space to power that GPU. There's also room for expansion with two NVMe drives on the PCIe board, swappable RAM, and an extra NVMe on the PCB. Honestly, I think the concept is really cool. There's a lot more picture over on the link down below, so go check it out if you want to. If AMD could do the same thing with their high-end desktop CPUs, that'd be great. All right, so the Q&A has been postponed to Wednesday because I just didn't have the time to include it today. If you have any questions, now is your last chance. You have to put it down below with the hashtag, hashtag Q&A, the letters Q, N, and A. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Why did I lower my chair? That was absolutely useless.